Hey, Tony Torrance here for the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. Uh, thanks for taking your time to watch our videos, and today we're going to do the spruce fly, a old fly that has been a uh, consistent producer for sea run cutthroats, rainbows, and brown, brown trout. We got a 5263 TMC in the vise here. I'll get some black thread, and you know, you can do red thread if you like. I just happen to have black in, so that's what I'm going to go with. So I've got some uh, peacock sword here. This is just a tip or a piece of it. Here's the, the larger package so you can see. I'm just going to pinch these fibers and trim them off of the stem. You know, and there's, I don't know, probably a half a dozen there. And I'm going to set it so they curl up. Now, a lot of, there's a lot of ways to skin a cat, as I always say. and you don't necessarily have to do it this way. There's, you can take um, peacock sword from two different sides of the of a, a pair of feathers and tie them in so they're all even. Well, it's a big pain in the hoo ha. So, what we're going to do is here is make it simple. Get our tail in. This is a fishing fly, not a presentation fly. So there's our our tail for our spruce fly, and that could be a little bit longer but we'll just go with it for demonstrative purposes. What I also like to do is I like to add a little bit of brassy, silver brassy wire, and then I bring that up through the entire fly just to make it a little more durable. This fly, you know, I've got steelhead, sea run cutthroats. I use it a lot for sea run cutthroats. It's a phenomenal fly for that. So I've got two fibers, or two strands, excuse me, of red floss. And I'm going to tie that in. The body should be about one-third red floss and about two-thirds uh, peacock. So I'm just going to get this tied in here and then kind of figure out my spacing. Um, rayon floss, I use the four strand from Danville. and you stroke it as you get that first drop is key to really kind of run your fingers down the strands on that first turn. And the reason for that is you've got to get all these fibers even. Otherwise you'll get strands that are kind of laying behind and plus you won't get a really smooth um, body. Also you can use your bodkin to kind of get these to lay flat as you're coming around and laying them. And the, you know, people that tie like uh, steelhead flies and Atlantic salmon flies get really finicky about their bodies sometimes and want to keep them nice and smooth. And I'll show you a little trick for doing that too. But the key to having a smooth body, and this one's not very smooth, is to um, have a smooth underbody. So you would be really careful with where you lay your wraps um, of thread so that you have any lumps or bumps or anything like that. So I'm going to tie that off. I'm going to put a little half hitch in here just so things don't come loose. So then you if you're really worried about this, then you take a burnishing tool, and this one is from um, Lagerton. Took me a minute there. And you rub with the floss up and down, and it just smooths out the bumps, and it'll make it nice and even. Um, and you can see how I'm kind of rubbing that over the floss. And if you want, you know, a super smooth body, if, if you were going to do a presentation fly or you really like that, then that's how you do it. Okay. 
So next we're going to tie in our peacock curl. And if you take your patch of peacock curl and you grab the tips, the tips here, and you pull um, from the, the uh, patch out of the bag, you'll get these longer fibers. And I'll just trim the tips off of these so they're nice and even. I'm going to come up the body, leaving enough space for my hackle in the front and get this started. And that way I get a fairly smooth body as I come back, wrapping over that. I think that's, yeah, let's, I think that's going to be okay. Yeah, that's about right. And then I'm going to make a loop of thread like I normally do. If you've watched any videos where I've done peacock curl, always, and there's six fibers roughly here. I'm going to make a chenille out of this. And I bring that around one time. And I grab it in my hackle pliers and I spin it. And I bring that up for the front portion of the body is this peacock curl that's, and you know, the thread in the center just makes it so much stronger um, where it can stand up to see around cutthroat teeth or whatever. You know, a lot of people use these uh, for rainbows too and brown trout. I tie a yellow version also, which I'll, I'll post at some point for brook trout. Um, I haven't seen the pattern. I can't find my pattern for it. But you can do this in yellow as well, yellow spruce. Okay, so I'm going to clean this up and tidy it up a little bit. A little half hitch to hold everything together. And then I just bring my silver wire up through here and that just protects the floss and the peacock. And then I'll just helicopter that wire off. Okay. Okay, so I have uh, two badger hackle. This is off of a saddle. You can use a cape as well, uh, streamer style. Generally, I try to keep the wings about the, the thickness of, or the width of the gap of the hook that I'm tying on. So that's fairly close. I'll line these up and get the tips lined up. And I've got them set so that they splay apart. I hope you can see that there. And I'll line up and I want it to come just to the tip or just beyond the bend of the hook. Okay. And then I'm going to start pulling fibers to get my measurement here. So I've got that. That's a good start. 
And then I'll grab a little further up and lay it here again. And I think that's about the length I want. So all I need to do is lay this on top. And then I'll take, actually that thing almost set perfectly that first time. That's, that's dumb luck. That's not normally how that works. And then I'll just adjust these to get the, the angle. And then I'll show you, I'll turn this fly. Usually they fight you a little bit trying to get them lined up. And that's still a little long, but I think I'm going to go with it and just pull them up in there a little bit. Just want to make sure they're straight and on top of the fly. Just give them one little twist here. You just kind of mess with them a little bit and you can see that hopefully that those are sitting on top of the hook and they're both splayed out. It's pretty darn close. I might move them back this way a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I've got those tied in. Now, you can um, just cut that off and that would probably be fine and hold the wing. But what I like to do is I like to come up here, pull these fibers or the stems back and wrap over them and then take my bodkin and lift those up like that and get them up out of the way and then trim that and make a couple more wraps to get that all laid in place. Okay. So then I've got my hackle for the front. So I've got my hackle here and I'm just going to strip off. You can see where it starts to turn all black down here. I'm going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to pull these fibers back and tie it in by the tip. So what I like to do is, and I don't know if you can see this, is I'll, I'll hold the tip out here and then I will come down and trim. And I'll show you this. It's easier to do when I stabilize. I trim off the, uh, the fibers off of the stem. And I will tie this in on top here. Make a couple wraps, fold it back so it can't escape, right? And then trim that off and then I'll hold the hackle up and run the back part of my scissors down this to fold the hackle. And then I will bring my fingers to kind of finish that folding and I'll start right here in front. of the wing. And I'll put three or four turns. I don't know what I've got here. I think I've gotten a little carried away. Let me, some of these fibers have gotten away from me, so here we go. There we go. Let's grab that and pull those fibers off of the stem. Snug that up, fold it back to tie over the top so that that can't come loose. I'm going to put just a couple whip finishes in here. And then trim this stem off. I think I made my wing a little long. We'll see here after, yeah, it's a little bit, just a little bit long, but it'll still fish. I mean, a very fishable fly. Okay, and we've got our spruce fly. There you go. 
Thanks for watching the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. Have a great day.